so wonderful to see you again here at Cedardale. We're so pleased that you've taken this time to devote to hearing the Word of God. And we have a very special event coming up soon called the Walk to Bethlehem. Now we've had bigger versions of it, but this year we have kind of a very simple walkthrough that is a self-guided tour that we will be holding on the evenings of November 25th and 26th. That's the Friday and Saturday. So please uh, bring your family and come along if you're able and enjoy this wonderful, impactful little uh, voyage through a walk to Bethlehem. And here, so here is today's word of God from the scripture. Psalm 136, verses 1 to 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him alone, who does great wonders, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the heavens with skill, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who spread out all the earth above the waters, for his loving kindness is everlasting. To him who made the great lights, for his loving kindness is everlasting. The sun to rule by day, the moon and stars to rule by night, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And may God bless this word to your heart and let it sink in. And now Pastor Grant will come and bring us the wonderful word of God. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. It's a wonderful day and it's a wonderful message. So we have a win-win. Amen. Well, let me pray and let me uh, thank God for you. And as we continue to go forward in Jesus' name, uh, we look forward to what he's going to do in our lives and in our church and in the churches around this world. Uh, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are amazing in every way. We can't even contemplate closely how awesome you are. For the scripture says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. It extols you as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And even Jesus is talked about as the fairest of 10,000. How awesome you are truly, O Lord. And we give you our hearts and our minds and our souls today that you would refresh us, renew us, and even convict us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. When we look at our text today, which will be Psalm 136, verse 4, it is a wonderful text and it is massive in a miracle of wonders. But there's some other texts that I'd like to read to you uh, before we do that. And it is, one is found in Job 5, 9. It says, who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Even in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 11, the writer Moses will say, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, wonderful in praises, doing wonders? Revelation 15, 3 will end with this crescendo of praise. The, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the saints. What a marvelous day we have before us to contemplate the greatness of our God. And in Psalm 136, verse 4, it'll say to him alone who does wonders or great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Friends, you're going to hear that term a lot today, and I thank God for that. Oh, my friend, his mercy does endure forever. Today's title of today's message is God the Wonder Worker. Brennan Manning, in his book, The Rag Muffin Gospel, says this, For what we need to know, of course, is not just that God exists, not just that beyond the steely brightness of the stars 
There is a cosmic intelligence of some kind that keeps the whole show going, but that there is a God right here in the thick of our day-to-day -day lives who may not be writing messages about himself in the stars, but in one way or another is trying to get messages through our blindness as we move around down here knee deep in the fragrant muck and misery and marvel of the world. It is not the it's not objective proof of God's existence that we want, but the experience of God's presence. That is the miracle we are really after, he says. Mystery has been defined as something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain, and wonderment is described as a state of odd admiration and respect. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm, says William Cowper in his marvelous hymn. Today's message is simply called God the Wonder Worker. The book of Psalms is a collection of poems or songs separated into five sections, which were put together for use in the temple worship. Within the book of Psalms, there are 150 chapters, which form a variety of authors and are related to different events and situations. In Psalm 136, 26 times, the psalmist declares, His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Psalm 136 is a special psalm with each of its 26 verses repeating the sentence, His mercy endures forever. And also, if you look at Psalm 118, it will repeat that affirmation five times as well. Throughout the Hebrew scriptures, the phrase has somewhat of a liturgical sense to it, as the assembled people of Israel sung this in response to the direction of the Levites, leading singing in this wonderful time of worship. Ezra 3.11 indicates that this encouragement was part of a responsive singing amongst God's people. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. This sentence is used several other times, though, in the Old Testament, each time in the context of some public praise or declaration, his mercy is found. It is also found in David's psalm of praise recorded in 1 Chronicles 16, which we actually did see last week. In the assignments of the priests in David's day and 1 Chronicles also 16. In Israel's praise at the dedication of Solomon's temple, Ezra 3.11 is the record of the Lord's victory over the Ammonites as they praised the Lord God of all. In the future, praised by Israel after the destruction suffered in the Babylonian conquest in Jeremiah 33 and in the dedication of Ezra's temple in his time. We picture a great multitude of people, the people of God, gathered in the temple courts. A priest or Levite would call out a reason to give thanks to God, and God's people would respond heartily, For His mercy endures forever! In Jewish tradition, Psalm 136 has been called the great halal, or the great psalm of praise. It does not use the words hallelujah. But it is called the great halal, for it is the way it rehearses God's goodness in regards to his people and encourages them to praise him for his mercy and steadfast love. Mercy is the translation of the great Hebrew word hased, which may be understood as Yahweh's grace or covenantal love or great loyal love or covenant love to his people. And yes, all those meanings are with that word. Do you think David was trying to drive home the idea of God's mercy to his people? After singing it 26 times, I imagine, friends, that they got it. They knew God's mercy endures forever. This threefold statement of the theme is praise to the triune God whose sovereignty is supreme as God of gods and Lord of lords. Did you notice in the opening section of this psalm, we see the word Lord then we see the word God, and then we see the, Lord, the word Lord with a smaller case. These are the opening lines which, which we were, are referring to and made reference to of the living God as Jehovah with the title of grace, and Elohim whose name is might, and Adonai with the title of sovereignty, 
That is why those three references to God's name are at the beginning of the psalm. In verses 4 to 9, God's loving kindness is that is demonstrated in creation. To him who alone does great wonders, who made heavens, the heavens with skill, made the earth, made the great lights, the sun and the moon. In verses 10 to 12, we see God's loving kindness is demonstrated in establishing Israel in the promised land, who he delivered from Egypt, who parted the Red Sea for them and faithfully led his people through the wilderness with a great multitude of people that he led faithfully for 40 years, defeated the mighty kings around them and gave Israel the inheritance of the land. Next, in verses 23 to 26, we see that he remembers the lowly. He rescues us from our adversaries and gives food to all living things and ends with give thanks for his loving kindness is everlasting. Beloved, when we get into God's world of wonders, it should overwhelm us with joyful praise and awed adoration. If we turn to nature, everywhere it teems with miraculous wonders. If we turn to science, it begins with wonder and ends with wonder. And everywhere there is wonder, baffling the imagination. When we turn to providence or the history of the nations or church history, all oh, the great wonders that parade before us. To him alone who does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. I have two points this morning. First, God is working wonders now. And second, God's wonders are still great. Amen. First, God is working wonders now. Did you know that God is working wonders right now? Wonders of mercy. To him alone who does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. He is good beyond all others. Indeed, he alone is good in the highest sense. He is the source of good, the God of all good, the sustainer of good, the perfecter of good, the rewarder of good. For this, he deserves the constant gratitude of his people, said C.H. Persian. Only God can do the greatest things in life with his mighty power and love for all. Did you know that the mercy of God is needed by all to be successful in all of life? His mercy cannot be earned or bought. Rather, it is freely given to men and women according to the will of God. Look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. The wonders of God's mercy are truly amazing. Look at Romans 9, verses 9 to 16. Without God's incredible mercy, your destiny and mine can be manipulated and truncated. For what gives meaning to life is the mercy of God, not man, his gizmos, or artificial intelligence. The Holy Scripture emphasizes the freedom of mercy, the freedom of the mercy of God, which can't be suppressed or restrained by human means, but flows in the direction which God desires and purposes. The mercy of God is not a function of age, sex, tribe, background, wealth, education, qualification, or intelligence. It is not limited by policy, protocols, laws, traditions, or knowledge either, brethren. When God's mercy is at work, you may be the last to come and be the first to be attended to. You may be given divine recognition and celebration against all human rejection and all human resistance and all human hullabaloo. Yes, when the mercy of God is in operation in a man or woman's life, the grace of God will abundantly abound in that life. God will release the ability to the man or woman to be able to do uncommon things, achieve uncommon breakthroughs, and obtain uncommon victories for his great glory. You see, it's not for me or for you. It's for his great glory that he does this, brethren. David could prevail against a horrible attack of a vicious lion and a ravenous bear while attending his father's flock. And yet he defeated the giant warrior Goliath with nothing but a sling and a stone. We see that David was victorious from his youth through the grace of the living God upon him. For the scripture says, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. In Romans chapter 8, this was a mighty demonstration of the mercy of God upon David's life. The mercy of God can also make someone preferred above others of similar or even better qualities or aptitudes or abilities. Did you know that I failed my interview with the Salvation Army in 2005? 
And yet I was asked to come back to the table, talk for two hours. The resume was taken from me and I was hired a week later. Not because of my greatness, not because of my wonderful way I put my resume together, but because of the mercy of the living God. That's why that could happen. The, you know, the mercy of God can make you and I succeed where others have failed and faltered. The mercy of God can give one blessings beyond human imagination. And the mercy of God can recover your losses. Yes, it can. And recover your wasted years, despite what the world says. God's mercy is abiding, persistent, and endless now, and is in the present tense, brethren, forever. God doesn't allow our arrogance to stop his generosity either. God's grace can be seen in the sacred and the secular because God's wonders are things out of the common, unusual things, extraordinary things. They are unexpected things. And when they come, they astonish us with awestruck wonder. God's great wonders, even when we get accustomed to them, should still continue to excite our imagination. Brethren, they should astonish us, and amaze us. They should cause us to pray the great wonder worker. And as it is written, sing unto the Lord, for he has done marvelous things. And I believe today that the living God of all is doing great wonders and saving great sinners all around this globe right now. For we have all sinned and fallen short of God's wonderful glory. Romans 3, 23. That God should call us sinner with the sweet voice of mercy and say, follow me, come follow me. And find loving favor with him is a great wonder in itself, my brethren. The Lord takes more time with a sinner than it took him to make a universe or a world. And he is doing great wonders in changing depraved natures, luring sullen souls, motivating hardened hearts, subduing tough, obstinate, crusty wills, and enlightening depraved, darkened minds, spiritual mercies, Jesus is working on even today the greatest demonstration of the always enduring mercy of God was seen in the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is and still is the Savior of the world. The message of Jesus transcends everything, for God's love knows no barriers or boundaries. God is our first seeker. Before any of us ever seek the Lord God, he has come for us. Now, isn't that a wonder in itself, brethren? His divine love eternally commits himself to his creatures and his creation. For you know why? Because Jesus is always on an errand of mercy and love. The Lord orchestrates events in our lives so that we can be found and saved. Praise his name. What a wonder salvation is that we should be called the children of God. Even John, writing 1 John, said that. This makes us candidates to receive and enjoy the blessings of God's mercy. And Jesus' words of love is like a swath of love cascading over the centuries. Oh, the wonder of God's leading. God is doing a wonderful work in every believer's life even now. God can break down barriers and set up divine appointments. And according to Psalm 139, God always knows what I'm doing. God always knows what I'm thinking. God always knows where I am. And even all my hairs on my head are numbered. Brethren, it's amazing. And there is absolutely no place on earth where the hand of God can't reach you and me. That's a wonder in itself. Yes, we see God greatly directing when it's greatly needed the most. Have you ever experienced a blackout in your home? You're walking about in your house at night and suddenly the lights go out and you are left in the pitch dark. For a moment, panic sits in, but after pausing for a while, your eyes begin to adjust to the darkness. You see the faintest light that comes through, maybe from the moonlight that cascades through the, through the window. You are thankful because this small bit of light helps you size up your surroundings and you can see enough to take the next step. God provides guiding light as well, even in the midst of our darkness. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. And he was silenced and was repelled by the crowds. But God, who was always merciful, stood still for him and commanded that he should be brought to him and gave him the miracle he desperately needed. Did you know that a, a believer's life is a mystery to him or herself and others? 
Jesus says, the wind blows where, where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3, verse 8. Do you ever wonder, friend, how you can still be a Christian in this mixed up, topsy-turvy, crazy world? Did you know that faith is so contrary to human nature that its existence in the heart is like a spark burning in the bottom of the sea? Faith is so attacked and maligned in this evil day that it is like a candle in the wind. And that's, give that credit to Elton John. Yet you and I have not given up or run from God. And you and I are still pursuing God with all our heart, mind, and soul. That's a wonder in itself. It's a great wonder also that the Lord should use any of us. So often we are so unfit and solely equipped for his divine, holy purposes that the living God should use any of us for his amazing glory should fill each of us with an awe and bewildering astonishment. Then there's the wonder of his church. The Lord does matchless wonders by sustaining his church and his holy cause of truth in the midst of this turbulent world. The story of his church is a constellation of miracles marvels and wonders that's actually beyond human calculation read church history friends and i urge us all to do it read it and you will see periods when the light of god's truth seemed quenched dwindled and almost extinguished but then out of nowhere it burns with a force poof just like that and with it comes a holy compulsion to advance the cause of christ Look at the Reformation in 1517, when spiritual life was almost extinct, almost extinct. Then suddenly a valley of dry bones was raised up and times of refreshing came from the Lord God himself. And God did make his purposes and his ideas known in that time, as Habakkuk said in Habakkuk 3.2. And it can be so in this cancel culture hour. Be encouraged, brethren, for the Lord God Almighty, who does great wonders, is equal to all the great emergencies, even today. Did you know that all the demons in hell, all the demons in hell can never quench the light of God's truth, and it can never, 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 never be. All men's councils, conclaves, and committees can never silence the living God, His Word, His Gospel, and Christ's work from abiding forever. Read Isaiah 55. Here is great comfort for every believer right now who's discouraged about the state of the church today. Brethren, he must have all the glory. He must have all the glory. For the extremity of the church is the opportunity of God. One night in February 358 AD, the church father Athanasius held an all-night service in this church in Alexandria, Egypt. He had been leading the fight for the eternal sonship and deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that the survival of Christianity depended on it. He had many enemies for political, even more than theological reasons. And they moved the power of the Roman government to kill him. That night, the church was surrounded by soldiers with drawn swords. People were frightened with calm presence of mind. Athanasius announced the singing of Psalm 136. The vast congregation responded, thundering forth 26 times, his love endures forever. His love endures forever. When the soldiers burst through the doors, they were staggered by the singing. Athanasius kept his place until the congregation was dispersed. Then he too disappeared in the darkness and found refuge with his friends. Many citizens of Alexandria were killed that night, but the people of Athanasius' congregation never forgot that although man is desperately evil, God is good. God is good. He is superlatively good, and his love endures forever. Then there's the wonder of his word. Brethren, we can expect the Lord to do mighty wonders with his holy word, because his word is never useless, nor comes back void. His holy word is a book of wonder. For he, he says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. His word is imperishable. His word is gracious. His word is life-giving. His word is incomparable. And his word is divine. Oh, my friends, you're just getting me started on this wonderful truth. 
His book talks of great and marvelous deeds, according to Psalm 9.1. Doesn't he say, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. Doesn't he say, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Doesn't he say, the deliverer shall come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. The world stands challenged, you know, in this 21st century, with the Lord's mighty question, Who? Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his, of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. Micah 7, 18. Did you ever read how his fearless apostles, armed with only the gospel, stood in the face of violent oppression, declaring that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin? Oh, my friends, the uh, Lord Almighty does not talk about trifles, baloney, or trivial things. So, brethren, he, his wonderful word of wonder does not promise trivial things either. And I heard a voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Revelation 19.6. Then there's the wonder of his Holy Spirit. When I recall that the Holy Spirit was instrumental in igniting the church in Acts chapter 2, I praise him. He who has come from heaven has never quitted or abandoned us or misguided us, but abides with his church to carry out his holy, noble purposes and intents of his grace by convicting and convincing men and women of sin and glorifying God. I am greatly encouraged to look for great and immense wonders because I serve a great and awesome God. Amen? Oh, the Holy Spirit, brethren, is not here in vain. He intends to do great things. Believe it again. Brethren, believe it again in this deadly hour. Our faith is spurred to confidently expect what human reason will never understand. I am convinced in my soul that the Lord is working on a great scale even today, where we, whether we see it or not. Between now and the great consummation of all things, wonders abound. So you know what, brethren? We need to look for them. Look for them. He delights in surprising men and women with his grace. For the Lord can do as much today as he's ever done in the ages past. Second, God's wonders are still great wonders. Ernest Becker, in his prize-winning book, The Denial of Death, notes how we as a culture try to deny death by turning from the reality of our aging and physical death and focusing on every possible means to live bigger than life. Whether through the heroes of our movies or thrills and pleasures or vicariously by paying individuals millions and millions of dollars to be our celebrities and sport heroes. That's why we need to be reminded that God does wonders and they are great wonders. For such a reality actually will change our perspective. There was a woman who had been diagnosed with cancer and had been given three months to live. Her doctor told her to start making preparations to die. So she contacted her pastor and had him come to her house to discuss certain aspects of her final wishes. She told him which song she wanted sung at the service, what scriptures she would like read, and what she wanted to be wearing. The woman also told her pastor that she wanted to be buried with her favorite Bible. Everything was in order and the pastor was preparing to leave when the woman suddenly called him back to her. There's one more thing, she said excitedly. What's that? Came the pastor's reply. Well, this is very important. The woman continued. What? said the pastor. I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. The pastor stood at the woman and and, and stared at her and didn't know quite what to say. This shocks you, doesn't it? The woman said. Well, to be honest, I'm puzzled by the request, the pastor said. The woman explained, in all my years of attending socials and functions where food was involved, my favorite part was when whoever was clearing away the dishes of the main course would lean over and say, you can keep your fork. It was my favorite part because I knew something better was coming. Well, there is something better coming, amen? Amen. His wonders are still great and always great and greatly great. Praise him for who to him who alone does great wonders. Oh, friends, but we've heard of wonders that weren't so great, haven't we? Wonders that weren't even true. Remember the magicians in Egypt 
who withstood Moses with their evil fabrications, or Simon Margus, the fake, in the book of Acts, and thousands of other false prophets who have relied on tricks and deceptions throughout all history. But God's wonders are authentic and real, and the deeper we go into them, the more wonderful they are. Nations can wonder at a blood moon, but you and I can't explain away election. We can't explain away redemption. We can't explain away regeneration. We can't explain away pardon of sin, transformation, or deliverance. The list goes on and on and on. These are the great wonders of God's amazing love. And the gift of Jesus Christ in the infinite God has outdone all his previous wonders, brethren. This is the greatest wonder that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. And angels still look into it. 1 Peter 1.12 This is the climax of all wonders and miracles. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. To him who does great wonders be glory forever and ever. World without end. In conclusion. Wonderment is described as a state of awed admiration and respect. For God has been described as a God of wonder and awe. For his wonders are done by him and him alone. Yes, my friends, it's amazing. The Lord is daily doing acts of love, mercy, and compassion. The God of all grace delights to contradict our despairs. When it is said that God does great wonders alone, it means that he does them, and he does them for his glory, and for his glory alone, for he does not give his glory to another. In Psalm and no one compares to him. Psalm 40, verse 5. The past, present, or future will not end his mercy. And the storms of life will not end his mercy either. Oh, the wonder of this faithfulness, said Spurgeon. Your loving kindness, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Psalm 36, 5. He never forsakes. He never forfeits his word. He never fails, falters, or flounders. Unfaithfulness is impossible for God. He can no more be unfaithful than he can lie, cheer, or steal. No matter what man does or says, God remains ever faithful. The Lord's loving kindnesses never cease, for his compassions never fail. And they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, said the prophet Jeremiah. Jesus Christ comes to us just as we are, even at death's door. Christ comes as the resurrection and the life for us. He brings a great salvation to those who trust him. So let's trust him with our gifts and graces, with a great passion to see souls saved. Brethren, believe that his everlasting purposes will stand and his divine covenant of mercy will endure forever. For these great wonders, he is to be praised. This verse is actually, in verse 4 of our text, is an accolade of praise. To him alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, my friend, meditate on the greatness and goodness of God. And when we begin to praise God for his great wonders and mercy, I can tell you what will happen. First, we shall see his glorious nature. Yes, and we shall begin to see the goodness of God and be overwhelmed by it. Next, while praising him for his marvelous wonders, we can learn to adore his marvelous Godhead. Yes, his marvelous Godhead. Give thanks unto the God of gods, it says. It's a grand thing to be deeply amazed about who God is, that he alone is God. And Job found that out. It's the greatest thing that any man or woman on this planet can muse on the sovereignty of God, his work, and his redemption, because his mercy endures forever. Friends, we don't need a greater song than this one, that we should shout, shout or sing this great halal. To him alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. Then we can truly stand in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. For me it was in the garden. He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat great drops from, of, for mine. In pity angels beheld him and came from the world of light to comfort him in his sorrows. He bore for my soul that night. He took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden on Calvary and suffered and died alone. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I at last shall see. T'will be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, 
How wonderful my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me and you. He is to be praised for he is great and greatly wonderful. Let's praise him today and remember that his mercy endures forever. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this day. May you bless our hearts. May it throb. May it pulse. May it beat with this wonderful truth, Lord God, that your mercy endures forever. It'll never be extinguished and it can't be canceled out. Even despite what the cancel culture says, you are a living God and a God of gods. We ask, Lord, that you would do a mighty revival in our time and bring us to our knees and thank you for your wonderful goodness and mercy to us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Amen.